Hello everyone, my name is Pradeek Mani. Today I would like to present my talk on a research article entitled Impedance Analysis of Geobacter Sulfuriducens PCA, Schuanella onidensis MR1. And their co-culture in bioelectrochemical systems published by Professor Saki Yung. Before going to start my presentation please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for amazing content and click the bell icon for timely updates on our channel. The contents of my presentation include an introduction, materials and methods, results and discussion, and finally the conclusion. Firstly, we will see the research background and research problem in the introduction part. Bioelectrochemical systems utilize extracellular electron transfer reactions to convert organic compounds into electricity, hydrogen, and other valuable products. Simultaneous with performing biological wastewater treatment. The bioanode is a crucial component in bioelectrochemical systems for biological electricity generation. Due to the high complexity of the bioanode process, it is hard to elucidate its electrochemical reactions. To understand the bioanode process better, researchers have utilized the electrochemical approach. Charge transfer resistance and capacitance of bioelectrochemical systems were characterized by applying electrochemical imp and spectroscopy which is also called EIS. And by analyzing transient potential responses. EIS is increasingly used to analyze the bioanode process due to its methodological convenience. The two famous exoelectrogens, g sulfuriducens PCA and s onidensis MR1 have been studied intensively to elucidate the bioanode process. The microscopic images of the g sulfuriducens and s onidensis MR1 are as shown in adjacent pictures. For a better understanding of their electrophysiology, simple voltimetry was performed on them. However, their impedance in bioelectrochemical systems has never been comparatively explored before. So, we analyzed the impedance of bioanodes inoculated with G-sulfuriducens, S. onidensis, and their co-culture in duplicate in this study. Charge transfer resistance and capacitance in each step of the exoelectrogenesis were successfully measured using g sulfuriducens and s onidensis in bioelectrochemical systems. And their co-culture imp and signature was also explored. Results reported here expand our understanding of the bioanode process, which can be used for the improvement of bioelectrochemical systems performance. Now we will see materials and methods used in this research work. First is bacterial growth and bioelectrochemical system. Duplicate two chamber fuel cells were constructed as previously with some modifications as shown in figure 1. The ends of each tube were glued with silicon, attached with anion exchange membrane, and assembled with a pinch clamp. The anode mouth and sampling port were sealed with butyl rubber stoppers and clamped with an aluminum cap. Anode electrodes were made of carbon cloth and cathode electrodes were made by applying platinum and four diffusion layers on a 30 weight percent wet proofed carbon cloth as previously described. g sulfuriducense strain PCA was purchased from ATCC and s onidensis strain MR1 was donated from Dr. Daniel Bond. The second is electrochemical measurement. Cyclic voltimetry and EIS were performed using a potentiostat reference 600. Before measurements, the reactors were operated for two hours to stabilize the bioanode in the fresh medium condition at minus 0.2 volts the circuit was disconnected for 30 minutes to create open circuit. Potential, an anodic CV was performed with a scan rate of 1 mV per second, Step size 1 mV, auto I by E range, scan limits minus 0.6 and 0.1 volt. Moreover, the EIS conditions are as shown in the triangular diagram here. Imped and spectra were fitted into the equivalent circuit model in previous studies by Chi Square Minimization using eChem Analyst. The equivalent circuit model consists of two successive RC time constants as shown in this figure too. A constant phase element was incorporated to model a non-ideal capacitor. Now, we will see the results and discussion. 
This table 1 represents calculated impedance parameters while in the following section we will see their analysis in details. The first result is a startup and CV. In the startup, all reactors produced current immediately as circuits were connected. Current developed rapidly in the PCA reactors, followed by the co-culture reactors and the MR1 reactors. Anodic CV showed the PCA anodes generated around 2.72 mA and the MR1 anodes generated around 0.12 mA current as shown here in Figure 3. Binary extracellular electron transfers in the co-culture reactors were expected to increase current production. However, the co-culture anodes were fed with lactate only and produced lower current possibly because slow lactate oxidation of MR1 could not provide enough acetate for PCA acetate is an anaerobic end. Product of the lactate oxidation of MR1 the second is EIS analysis. Here, figure 4 shows the Nyquist plots of anodes, A shows the plot for PCA, B for MR1, C for their co culture, and D shows their composite plots. In both the PCA anodes and the MR1 anodes, the intracellular process had higher values of impedance R, capacitance C, and non ideality constant alpha than the extracellular process as shown in figure 4. Intracellular impedance is occupied nearly 80% of total impedance in the exo-electrogenic electron transfer in the PCA and nearly 95% in the MR1. In other words, intracellular impedance was nearly 230 to 450% larger than extracellular impedance in the PCA and nearly 1750 to 1900. 150% larger in the MR1 indicating the intracellular process was a rate limiting step in both bacterial strains. Total capacitance was predominated by the intracellular capacitance in both conditions. Conclusively, these results show that PCA harbors exo-electrogenic machinery more energy efficient and more conductive. Finally, these are the conclusions from the research work. CV tests showed PCA, MR1 and their co-culture produced around 2.72 mA, around 0.12 mA, and around 68 microampere current, respectively. The PCA anodes and the MR1 anodes had intracellular impedance a few orders of magnitude larger than extracellular impedance. Intracellular impedance and extracellular impedance of the PCA anodes were about 9-fold and 31 to 55-fold lower than those of the MR1 anodes respectively. Total capacitance was dominated by CIN in both PCA and MR1. The total capacitance of the PCA anodes was nearly 2.5 fold higher than for the MR1 anodes. Different morphologies of high frequency arcs were created from the three culture conditions. Suggesting EIS might be used as an electrochemical fingerprinting method to identify exo-electrogenic pathways. Thank you very much for listening to the presentation. I hope you like this video. Keep in touch with us for more updates.